Well, good morning, all. Welcome to worship on this, the first day of spring, this beautiful sunny morning. A little fresh, but still a beautiful day. To all the fathers and would be fathers here, happy Father's Day. Hope you have a great day. Um, hope the family, if you've got one, has got something in store for you. Let's stand and sing our first hymn, 100, and we're only singing verses 1, 2, 3, 5, and 7. Okay.
morning, everyone, and welcome to St. John's. <laughs> Thank you, Sandra. Um, invitation to everyone to join us for morning tea immediately following the service just down the stairs in the building adjacent. And if you're choosing to use the Green Prayer Book, we begin on page 119. Otherwise, everything you will need will be on the wall behind me. I add my Father's Day wishes and blessings to all those here who are fathers and those who have fathered those that are not their own but led the way. Happy Father's Day. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Join with me in saying the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you.
The Lord be with you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark, chapter 7, beginning at the first verse. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around him, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you, hypocrites, as it is written, This people honours me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human percepts as doctrines. You abandon the common commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. When he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about the parable. He said to them, Then do you all so fail to understand? Do you see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile, since it enters not the heart but the stomach and goes out into the sewers? Thus he declared all foods clean. And he said, It is what comes out of a person that defiles, For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. For the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Pray, Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts today and always be acceptable to you, our Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Listening to Keith read that first reading, I thought maybe I should have written my sermon on that, how juicy it would be. But really when you boil it down, it's asking us, are we ready for Christ to come? as our lives in tune. And also our Gospels today are asking us, are our lives in tune? You know, when I grew up, I kept getting told as I came into the house, wash your hands. You've been out playing in the dirt or the garden, been to the loo, wherever. Wash your hands. And when I got married, it didn't change. <laughs> Wash your hands, Jeffrey. I thought the one I do, Kerry was talking to. But we've had this hand washing business throughout society for many, many, many years. 
The ancients learnt washing your hands was good for hygiene. It took the World World Health Organisation up until 1980 to write a definitive instruction on how to wash your hands and why you should do it. Yet, for 200 years, doctors have been pushing for personal hygiene. It's become a ritual, hasn't it? It's something we do, hopefully, automatically. And it's rituals that Jesus is attacking in the gospel. And we here in the Anglican Church have our rituals. We have our prayer books. We have the liturgical dress. And there's supposed to be a guide for us to enable us to enter into a worship of God. Not be a point of worship themselves. If you read out the early pages of the prayer book, it said it's a, a resource, a guideline on how you can put a service together. And you can use whatever combination of it you wish. They are beautiful. I've grown up with them. And if used in the right way, they can bring you into the presence of God. Our services are all written from Scripture. But we're not to put them in place of God. And this is what Jesus was facing when he was on his journey and the Pharisees challenged him over the fact that his disciples had picked some grain and eaten it and they hadn't washed their hands. See, for the Pharisees and the priests of old, it was a ritual that they had to wash their hands before they were allowed to do a service or do the sacrifice. It was in the book of Deuteronomy. And it was a way of showing their allegiance to God. You know, for the first of the commandments, put God first. So they felt they were honouring God by following the rules. But they'd made it so strict that there was no flexibility. In other words, they were worshipping the rules and failing to see what they were meant to be doing. So when Jesus was challenged over it, he said, you know, it's not the outward watching that matters, it's your heart. What goes in? And so we need to be careful what we take into our heart, what we put in our lives that prevents us from seeing God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit the Holy Trinity, of who they are. It's very easy, and Kim read out a whole list of evil things that we could take into ourselves. And if we take those things into ourselves, they will come out. They will show out in the way we live, the way we relate to other people, and society. You know, washing hands is a good thing for society. Remember, with the COVID pandemic a few years ago, we were told to wash our hands. We had sanitizer at every street corner just about, or in every shop, and you had to use it before you went in. So cleanliness is, as Scripture says, next to godliness. But we need to make sure our inner self is clean, and only read and watch those things that are beneficial for our spiritual life. It's all right to watch some of the movies that are on TV. Follow the you know, police stories or the mysteries or, or whatever. But you don't make them a point of focus. You don't make them your total diet. So we feed ourselves, and if we feed ourselves on scripture, on prayer, on worship, then it will also show up through the way we live and the way we relate to people. So Jesus is saying to us, be careful where you put your rituals. Be careful how you live out your life 
as a Christian. And I've known people in the, the Anglican Church communion that do worship the process that we go through. They fail to see that the process is there for a purpose, to lead us to worship God, not to be the God in itself. And so Jesus is asking us today to make a check on our lives, to look within, because Jesus doesn't care whether you wear Gucci suits or King G clothes or drive a Lamborghini or whatever. All he has cared about, all he cares about is where your heart is in relation to your faith in him. Do you love Christ with all your heart, mind, soul and strength? Are you, as the Song of Solomon, or Song of Songs, sorry, um, said, ready for our lover, our Christ, to come when he comes? And the only way we'll be ready is if our inner self is clean, if our inner self is in tune with the word of God and what he wants of us. We'll only be the disciples he wants us to be if our inner self is in tune with God and with scripture. The rest is peripheral. So let us have a a think today about where we are in our relationship with God, where we put the things of our life, where we put church. Are we coming here to worship a process or the God for whom the process was designed? I said, if you read our service book, our prayer book, it is set out to lead us to worship God. And so it's the words, the, the scripture that leads us to God and the style of worship, not the format. Let us use our rituals, our formats for what they were meant to do, to bring us into the presence of God so we can praise our God with all our heart, mind, soul and strength and be ready for him when he comes. Amen.
gracious God, we thank you that in this sacrament you assure us of your goodness and love. Accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving and help us to grow in love and obedience that we may serve you in the world and finally be brought to that table where all your saints feast with you forever. Father, we, we offer, offer ourselves, ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Send us Send out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise, praise and glory. Um, I'm reading from a letter that we received, or Kim received. I'm writing to confirm your appointment as Archdeacon of, to the Diaconate and the Head of the Household of Deacons, effective from 1st of September, which is today, with a view towards collating at Synod. In other words, Kim's been appointed by the Bishop to be Archdeacon to the Diaconate. <laughs> so we wish Kim well on her journey. I, and... I won't be leaving. I can do the two jobs together at the same time from the same place, but there will be occasion when I toddle off on a weekend. It'll be generally my rostered weekend off, which I'm always here for, <laughs> but in the future I may not always be here for on my rostered weekend off as I go and visit other deacons wherever they might be. Yeah. So thank you very much. I actually couldn't have done it without the support of the people in this place so who hassled me and bodged me and prodded me all the way with <laughs> six years of study and to be ordained two and a half years ago and to be in this place. So thank you to those of you who have supported me all the way. Thank you. So Kim will be looking after the deacons, okay? All good news. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with each one of you today and every day that God, by his grace, will grant you. Amen. Let's stand and sing our final hymn, Forth in your name, O Lord, I go.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Well today is uh, focus is mainly on cleanliness, being clean, clean on the inside as well as the outside. The priests of old in Jesus' day had made a ritual out of the cleanliness and the way they did church. And we're being challenged today to not do that. Yes, do church. Use our rituals, our services to lead us to worship but not make them the point of worship. And also to be careful what we take in, for what we take in reflects the cleanliness or otherwise of our, our spiritual life. Amen. I